Income Tax 2021-2022 Software Example Other Income Part Number 2 Get ready to get refunds to the max Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 Lacert Tax Software. You don't need access to any software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 W-2 income, 12,550 standard deduction for the single filer, 87,450 at the taxable income, mirrored on our equation in Excel, 100,000, 12,550, 87, 450 then we calculate the tax on page number two and that at the 1515 we're going to be focused on schedule number one now looking at line eight so this is schedule one part one line number eight and we were down here at jury duty we did we saw some of the other ones up top in a prior presentation these are usually things that are a little bit more unusual to happen jury duty is fairly usual to happen usually the dollar amount is inconsequential to, to the tax for the most part, not the most material thing oftentimes, but you wanna make sure that you're reporting it properly so that you make sure that you have everything on your side uh, on our tax return populated in a similar way as the documentation that's gonna be provided to the IRS to make sure that things are, pop, are processed properly. There could be some exceptions to it in terms of like how your employer is gonna reimburse you, are they paying you for the jury duty and so on and so forth. But in general, the, the items that are being paid by the employer reported on the W-2 and uh, the jury duty. If you get information for that, you get the documentation for that. And we want to make sure that we've got the reporting properly done so that it lines up and uh, the, the tax return processes smoothly. So I'm just going to put the 250. So there's the 250. It's going to sum up down below. If I go then to page one of the 1040, it's going to flow in through to the line eight other income so now we're at the 100,250 we can mirror that in our equation here by saying that if I go to the additional income let's add one for jury duty duty jury duty and jury duty and this is going to be 250 and that's that's what I named my dog jury and then I got to pick up the jury duty every once in a while you know in any case, that pulls over to page one, <laughs> page one of the 100,000. We're at the 12,550 standard deduction, 87,700 on the taxable income. And that should mirror what we have on our tax return. That's not the tax return. 87,700, is that what I said it was? 87,700, it is indeed. Page two, calculating the tax at now the 1575. So 1575, 1575. 15075. So there we have that one. Let's go back on over. Let's run a different scenario, bringing this back to the norm, back to the starting point, jumping on over to the schedule number one. Then we got the prizes and awards. They, they can be a little bit confusing in terms of the tax treatment on specific uh, scenarios. So if, and they're more unusual as well there. So if you have questions about the prizes and uh, award information, then uh, you can look at, you can start to research there on the form 1040 instructions. But a lot of these items on, on line eight are gonna be items that you might receive documentation for. And you're saying, okay, where do I put this information? And if it doesn't fit anywhere else, you might have to, you might put it here. And if you get a 1099 or something like that, you would think that your first thought is maybe I need to record it basically in income. So I'll go to the next one. And then we've got activity not engaged in for profit. Now this is a fairly common one or, or some people could have income, for example, for things that they're not doing to engage in for profit. And it's important to distinguish what that is because there's pros and cons of reporting something as basically a business, which you might report, say, on a Schedule C versus something that you might report here as, say, for example, a hobby. So if I was to go to a, to the Schedule C uh, note, and this, this often has people off, there's many arguments that are made oftentimes for people that want to report it on the Schedule C. Why would you want to report it on the Schedule C as opposed to a hobby? Well, because then you might get all these deductions. And if you get a bunch of deductions, you could you could possibly write, wind up with a loss. And a loss would be good because you might be able to take the loss against other income. The, ta the government's going to be skeptical of losses, however, because they're, they're going to think that you're kind of cheating the system. You have a hobby 
that you're writing off your losses against other income. So on the other hand, if you don't have any expenses, you would rather record it as a hobby because then you're not gonna pay social security and Medicare. So let's take a quick look at this. We'll say, let's say I had income and it was wages. Let's not, not wages. I got schedule C income. And let's just say it was 100,000 or 1,000, 1,000, I, I mean, 1,000. Okay, so then if I if I go back on over on the 1040, now that 1,000 is flowing through from the Schedule C, so it's going going from the Schedule C ultimately on over to the to the 1040, and it flows into the 1040. But there's other consequences, so this is actually bad because I'd rather have that 1,000 not reported here if if I don't get any deductions because on page two, as you can see, I've got this other tax which is Social Security and Medicare. That's the self-employment tax. So if you just have $1,000, you have no other expenses, then you don't want to report it as, as Schedule C income subject to self-employment tax uh, because that would, that would result in more taxes, right? You'd have to pay the self-employment tax. So, but if you had a bunch of expenses related to it, so if I had more expenses, 2,000 of expenses, let's say 3,000, of expenses now I would like to report it as a Schedule C business because now I have a loss so I have a loss which is then gonna pull over to the page one of the 1040 and it's gonna be a benefit lowering my other income which is a benefit for taxes the IRS is skeptical of losses so there's many businesses that people are into and it also has to do with whether the IRS thinks the business would be fun or not right so if you like horse breeding or horse races, or if you're like if you're you know a movie editor or something like that, and you spend all your and all of your expenses are are there for travel or something because because you're experiencing movie stuff or something, the IRS is more likely to say, hey, that sounds kind of like a hobby, uh, you know, and you've got like five years of losses that you're writing off against wages, and we don't like that, <laughs> you know, so they might then qualify it as a hobby, which means you wouldn't get those deductions if it was a hobby, you'd have to record the income, although the income would not be subject to the, to the self-employment. So, so if you could take the deductions, that would be good. Just remember, if you have like more than three years of deductions in a row or losses in a row, it's more likely the IRS is going to shift their position and put the emphasis on you. You have to prove that you're in it for business as opposed to the emphasis being on the IRS that they have to prove that it's not a business related item. Now, if you go back to the to the 1000 and you just had the 1000, then you would rather report it uh, over here. If, if you didn't have any other expenses, you don't want to report it as income then. Generally, you'd, you'd rather report it someplace over here, activity engaged in not for profit. And I'll put a thousand there, bring it on back on over to the home page. So that totals up to a thousand, pulls it up to the 1040. So then there's the 1000 and that brings up the 101. I don't have anything on page two for other taxes, social security and Medicare. We can mirror that on our worksheet. I could say, okay, additional income. This is gonna be, I'll call it hobby income instead of whatever they called it there, 1000. And so then there's another one that we can line up in case it comes up sums up to a thousand pulls over to the first page of the 1040 for the 101 we still got the 12,550 standard deduction that should bring us back to the 15015 I would assume so if I go back on over 100,000 88,450 and the the 15,255 15,255 I mean 15,255 would be the tax okay so there's there's that one Okay, so then let's go back on over to Schedule 1. You got stock options. Now, oftentimes, if they came from the employer, you would expect, hopefully, the stock options to be taken care of, in essence, within the W-2, possibly, if there's some part of employee compensation. So it would be taken care of there. But if it's not, then you might have to report that other income here. Income from rental uh, of personal property if you engaged in the rental for profit, but we're not in the business of renting such property. So you might have a, a situation of that. You can look into the instructions for the 1040 in more detail there. We'll talk about rental on a Schedule E uh, in a future presentation. 
And then we have the Olympic and Paralympic medals. This is probably a more unusual type of situation, so you're probably not going to see that too much. But if you do, you can take a look at the instructions and see how much of that might be uh, taxable. There could be uh, benefits or non-taxable component, depending on the income level. And then you've got the Section 951 inclusion and so on taxable distributions from the ABLE account. So you can look in the ABLE accounts in general to see more information on that. If you get some documentation related to it, that's when you probably want to dive into it. And then other income, uh, if anything else you get, if you say, hey, I got this 1099 or this form that looks like an income reporting form of some kind, for example, or I have some income that they're telling me about that is not, uh, I think I have to include, but it's not in any of these items. I don't want it to be subject to self-employment, then you might just write on the line, write on the dotted line what it is and add it down here to include it in other income, which of course would then pull over to the first page of the form 10401040.